So, the enemy is no threat for us anymore, so we're going to just speed it up a bit. Still sends troops around, but they're nothing. The voice woke me up, whispering about spells to awaken the dead, curses to make enemy go blind, and potions to make anyone fall in love with you. I hope I can remember all of this when I wake up again. Alright, okay, what is this? Chief Ternath of Osreich is trying to usurp my title. <gasps> okay, so he's doing what I did, Jem. He's trying to get my title. So I noticed it, so I can try to kill his diplomat or give him money to stop it. We're going to try and kill him. Which I don't think work out. All right, so he continues trying to fabricate a claim. Oh, no, no, no. Our ally thought to attack here. My liege, I have a great idea for a monument. Something to raise our cultural status and make the people notice what a great ruler you are. I would require some gold. Okay, let's do it. It's not all that much in terms of gold. Oh, perfect. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. So in this battle, we are marching over plains when one of my officers mutters, Once I'm back in Urmohain, I'm giving up this soldiering life and... Maybe I will be a baker? I chuckle considering my own more strategic aspirations. What about you, my lord? What will you focus on in your future? So, we are already a flanker, so leading the center doesn't help us. Unyielding, that's not bad. But organizer, that's something that can really help. Because it increases the movement speed of your armies and helps with retreating. I'm not entirely sure what the retreat does. That's not bad. I think... Uh, let's go with organizer. No, it's not. We, we don't have much distance to travel. Let's go unyielding. Good. So he has defeated his enemy. And we shall go. My confessor talked sternly to me, clearly avoiding to bring up the Korkutil's rumor, but I just nodded and accepted all he told me without admitting to anything. He lost his patience with me. He scolded me and told me to repent, to stop fiddling with the occult. Or else. I repent, I will never fiddle with the occult again. Let's become a zealous warrior. Which is nice. So we stand down our troops. And we spend some prestige to build up ever more. Let's go for our training grounds. Why not? So, special minor titles. Let's. There's no court physician, but we might be able to find one. Uh, no, we do not. Let's invite someone very learned. Um. Invite him. So, a kinsman we don't care all that much about. Right. Okay, again, we want our church vassals to like us so they get all the cool titles. And our commanders as well. Court tutor is the person with the greatest amount of everything. And the commanders, well, as it were, are the ones that have the highest martial skill. Which there isn't all that many of currently. But we'll take whatever we can get. Thank you for coming here. 
be my commander. Good. Who was that? Our court physician. Right. That's who we wanted here. Very good. So sometimes there's some information about religious uprisings and stuff and we don't really care all that much. So, okay. Now let's check him out. We declared war on him and we defeated him, but we also de joined him in his war. So he is my ally and my suzerain. Suzerain? Suzerain, I believe. So if we check out our, we get some tribute here. It's not even that little. We earn more than from our own holdings, from our tributary. But most importantly, most importantly, he will join us in any war. And look at this. We have 1,650 troops upon us. <laughs> we don't want cynical, but we want local revolt with risk reduced because people are blessed. All right. You want to marry one of my courtiers? I don't care. Do it. We don't care about composing a book, so we're just going to remove this so we don't get a notification over it anymore. It's not really important for us. All of these others... There's a lot to do here, but honestly, if you want to find out what it is, just read on them. I'm not going to use most of these, if any at all. So, let's check him out. He has 700 and something odd troops. And he can raise potentially 400. So he goes up to 1,300. Our friendo here has 640 standing. And we have 1,200 already. So let's build up a little more. Maybe we get a claim as well. If not, we're going to defeat him and then start claiming here. Once we got this piece, we will be able to usurp his title anyway. Oh, lovely. A small kitty is demanding your attention. We may pet it and have a chance to become a kind person, which we are not. <laughs> or we allow the kitten to follow you home, which gives us plus one health and one intrigue because we now have a pet cat. Pets do die eventually, but it's lovely to have one. So now we got a pet cat, which is lovely. All right, the monument is finished. The statue is unveiled and it's a, just a bigger version of Domnall, which is him. Only slightly better looking than real Domnall. Uh, so Domnall gains 200 prestige or we become bitter rivals. Um, fine. I let him have this one. My court physician has shared some of his latest ideas with me. I'm not... I do not know too much of medicine, but perhaps he is onto something. He has asked for some money to develop his theory further and write a book on it. Ah, uh, we don't have 20 gold to spend on this. I'm sorry, man. Father, father, calls Cathal, pulling my arm, pleading to play with him as his latest toy, completely oblivious to all the important work I am in the middle of. Sometimes this kid can be really insufferable. All right, Cathal, what is it? Not now, child. We have a 20% chance to become cruel. All right, let's... Let's neglect our responsibilities and become kind. Kind isn't great for a warrior. But our vassals like it, so that's fine. Good. Oh, perfect. I was just about to say we, are, we now have enough troops to fight. But our bishop has ra risen forever. A small army of zealots has converged on Urmohain, tribe ready to serve me. Now I simply need to attack some suitable infidel before my new recruits wander off into, in disgust. So, we're going to declare war.
And I failed a little bit because I wasn't paused. Right, so we want our guy on the flank. On the strong flank. And we will call him in because he doesn't have a chance. And we're going to attack her across the river once we have all our troops together. Which isn't ideal, but we have a, a huge superiority in numbers. And our soldiers are better as well. Or actually, let's just wait for him to cross and then we attack him. Or no. We need to attack here first. Uh, we're going to tell our ally to attack him. Reason being, we declared war, and over there immediately troops rose up as well, which generally doesn't bode well. They're fighting the north, honestly, so it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, we don't need to lose our troops to fighting the enemy. Okay, fine, he, he thinks he doesn't need to lose his troops fighting the enemy either. Just we needed to make sure to be the first to attack. Let's have him attach, coward. Wait for his troops arrive, and then attack with the full force. There we go. Oh, our leader slid into the center again, which we don't want him to do. We want him as a flanker because that's where he's really at his best. So this flank crumbled, didn't even engage, honestly, just fell. Alright, let's stand down our vassal troops here, because they don't do anything anyway. Don't want more allies. And now we tell our guy to go and hunt enemies. And we'll have to move our diplomat later to try and claim somewhere else, but we might be able to usurp the title we want. Just need to survive long enough. Which maybe doesn't make it so sensible that we are leading troops, but we are clearly the best commander out there. In our realm. Someone can marry. Let's have at it then. And get a new little alliance going. Uh, there we go. Okay, as you see, our ally is doing as he's told. He's going to hunt down our enemy so we can siege in peace, not have to worry about this as he goes and destroys them wherever they rear their ugly heads. And we get all the glory and the coin out of doing this here. Oh, okay. Speaking of coin, we can create a earthen hill fort. We could go for a market village too, but that doesn't make a much, uh, a much a sense. Because we don't want to become a merchant republic. We want to be feudal at some point. So we're going to go for an earthen hill fort. And increase that. Which makes us poor for a while, but that's okay. So let's check our vassals. Everyone paying to the right person? Yes, they are. All goes to the crown. And we have won. What happened here is in this battle, our ally captured the leader of the enemy faction, which means they have no chance anymore. If they are captured, they're done. If I get captured, I'm done. You might be able to ransom yourself free and pay your way out of jail. 
but they are not going to be given this chance. Right. Okay. So now we've taken this. We'll stand down our troops. And we're also going to get this army of the bishop, which honestly we don't need anymore. So let's have them be raiders and raid down here, because why not? This should be our retinue. So, what they're doing is, they're taking as much gold as they can, up onto where they can't take anymore. I also believe these are retinue, and not actually the Holy Warriors. Do we still have the Holy Warriors? No, they're gone. So we don't have to worry about these, so that's good. So I did think that we would own most of this, allowing us to usurp this. Which it does, but we don't have the gold. Now how do we get the gold? There are several ways that might help us here. We could go ahead and borrow 300 gold from Jewish merchant, which... It gives us a malice to what our vassals think of us. And we need to th have 350 gold to repay it. So, we're going to do this. Now we can usurp this petty kingdom of Mumu title. Spending some of our gold. And there we go. We have now secured our succession, really. And some new actions have become available. So, let's check those out, shall we? We have more titles to grant. We get one more commander to lead our armies in battle. And we can set a crown focus, which basically increases things within a certain county, um, which we have done now. I don't exactly know what it does. Uh, I've accidentally set it somewhere else now. Okay, well. It never have seemed to have done anything, so, eh, who cares. As you can see, we're still going to lose chiefdoms underneath us. Which is because all our sons have claims to these. We can prevent losing those chiefdoms by granting them to our other kid, but we can't. <laughs> but if we grant each kid one chiefdom, they won't want any, because they already have any. But it's it's fine. It'll just be done once they uh, inherit anyway. So for now, we leave it as that. However, our realm won't get splintered anymore. Because now we have the Duke title above all of this. So if you look at our duchy and you click on the de jour, you see what is rightfully part of our duchy. So this piece down here is rightfully part of ours. So now we can fight a de jure war over this. We don't have to fabricate a claim. We don't have to do anything. We can just get it in war legitimately. So it's time to create a claim somewhere else. Probably here in the north somewhere. So there we go. We have finally secured our realm or done the first step within our realm. Yeah, that was really good. We did well, we did great.